Today is October 21st. It's a little past 10 o'clock, and I'm here with my APCS A class. And we're going to talk today a little bit about subjects and verbs. And let's look at this little set of sentences that I have set up. Now, in English class, hopefully your English teacher has taught you that in order to have a complete sentence in English, you have to have both a subject and a verb. So let's look at this sentence right here. And I would like to know which is the subject and which is the verb. Mr. Manet, sir, what is the subject in this sentence? This is the noun. And then the verb is what here, Mr. Mason? Runs. This is some article that is adding less value to the sentence, but we have things like this in English. We don't usually have stuff like this in programming that's not really adding a lot of value. Now, I mentioned to you that in English, in order to have a complete sentence, you have to have both a subject and a verb. So my next question to you is, this word right here, is that a complete sentence in English or not? Discuss with your partner. It is. It is a complete sentence, and it appears to break the rule about subjects and verbs. I think we can all agree that this is a verb. We can all agree with that, right? What is the subject, Miss, here? Okay. So the subject is implied, the subject being spoken to. I can also write that like this. And uh, basically what I'm saying is I'm implying that you should run, you run. So here you can see that the implied subject is you. Even though it's not explicitly stated, it's implied that if I say run, I want you to run. Now, I need you to understand that it's a little different when we program. Here, for example, I've created a noun. See the noun I've created? This is this object D. And here I'm asking the, uh, the dog D to speak. So now today we're going to talk about what does it mean if I just say speak without a noun? Now, I think I mentioned to you earlier that you're not really supposed to be doing this, calling verbs without a noun. But similar to how in English you can imply the subject, you can sometimes mm -hmm. imply the subject in computer science also. So to explain this to you, I'm going to open up a small project on BlueJay. I call this my implied subjects project. And right now I've created this demo class. It's got nothing in it. And uh, I, I just realized I need to create another class in here. Oops. And I'm going to call it the dog class. And I'm just going to put one method in the dog class, which is the speak method. Okay, so I've just put a little dummy dog class in there. And now in here, I'm going to start off by putting in a main method. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by creating two dogs. And I'm going to ask the question, is this going to compile or not? What do you think here? Uh, Miss Ariam, look up here. Uh, I created these two dogs. You see, I created these dogs, D1 and D2. I know I've created dogs because I use this keyword new. And then I'm asking the dog to speak. Is this okay or not okay? It is not okay. You can see that there's an error. Why is the compiler confused? Miss Salutkar, why is the compiler confused? No, I'm telling it to speak right here. See, I said speak. No, the, the speak method doesn't take parameters. You can see here it is no parameters here. The compiler's confused, miss. What's it what's confusing it? You know? Here, let me draw you an analogy, right? Let's say you and Ms. Caitlin are in a room, right? And I and I come up to the room and I say speak. What what's the potential for confusion? Okay, I'm not telling the compiler which one I want to speak here. I'm not telling it which dog I want to speak. So how do I fix this, Ms. Asaludkar? Okay, so I need to specify a subject here. And unlike English, going back to English here, where the, the, the noun and the verb are connected by a space, uh, in 
programming, we use this dot to connect the noun and the verb together because spaces are kind of ignored by the compiler. So it makes it much easier to see. Furthermore, in regular English, you can't really tell which ones are the nouns or the verbs unless you know the vocabulary. But in Java, you can easily distinguish the nouns from the verbs because the verbs have these convenient parentheses to tell you that they're verbs, action words. So going back to our little example here, you can see I can go like this, or I can go like this, and that would be perfectly OK. So now uh, my next question is, do we ever imply the subject in programming? And the answer is yes, and that's today's lesson. I'm going to give you an example of that. So let's say that in this dog class right here, I create another method now called play. And inside this play method, I'm going to call the speak method. And what I want to know is, is this going to compile or not compile? Please discuss with your partner. Mr. Garofalo, do you think this will compile, sir? It will compile. And now my next question, which is the V question for the day, is how does it know which dog is speaking if I haven't given it a subject? Yes, sir. Uh, so Mr. Degoja is saying, when you call the play method, you have to specify the subject. And then what, sir, would be the subject of the speak method in that scenario? So it's the same dog. You get the idea? It's the same dog you call the play method on. So here is my little analogy in from English versus computer science. If you don't specify a subject here, what is the implied subject in English? It's you. You is the implied subject. Now here's the key difference. In computer science, if you don't specify a subject, what is the implied subject? Who can tell me? What's the implied subject? It's not you. Yes, I'm going to say it's I is the implied subject. I speak. Who, who am I? I'm the one who's who you're working with at the moment. So here, for example, it's whichever dog you call the play method on. You see that, right? It's not it's not some other dog. It's it's me. It's my turn to speak. I, I've been asked to play and play calls speak. Whichever dog got asked to play, that's the dog that's speaking. Now. What's confusing to some beginning programmers, you say, well, when is there some easy rule for when I'm allowed to have a when I when I'm forced to have a subject and when I can leave the subject out? And the answer is yes, there's a very easy rule. See if you can figure out with your partner when what is that rule? Like how come I can call speak here? The positioning of speak is in a special place. What's what's special about it that does not exist here? Look over here. So if I go here, if I say speak here or play here, uh, that property is not true here, but it is true here. That's, that's my question to you. Can someone tell me what is the rule for when the subject is implied? Look, it can't be implied here, but it can be implied there. Mr. Pandali, what do you, what's your guess, sir? When it's inside another method? Uh, when it's inside another method that is not quite, not quite. Someone else want to take a shot at it? It needs to be in something. Yes, Miss Sophie? You don't need a subject for this speak method when you're in the class that the speak method is in. Here, I'm in the speak method is in the dog class, right? This call is happening in the dog class code. So now you don't need to specify a subject because you're talking about the current dog. You're in the dog class. Here, you're not in the dog class anymore. You're in a different class. What class are you in? Demo. The fact that it's in the main method is not really that relevant. I could have some other class, and I could have a method in there, and I'm calling this speak method. But if I'm not in the dog class, I'm in some other class, I still need to specify a subject. So therefore, the rule is, that when you're calling the method, if you're in the same class, it's assumed you're working on the current object, the current dog. So that's why you don't need a subject here. In fact, you typically won't have one.
So that is the key for today's lesson. I need you to understand now here, you got to have a subject and a verb here. You can have the verb by itself because the subject, I, the current dog, is implied. Now, if you wanted to, you could go like this. Look, you could go dog uh, D3 equals new dog. And you could go D3.play. You, you could do that. See that? You could do that. But my point is that if you just say speak or just say play, you can do that inside the dog class because it's assumed you're working on the, the current dog. This is going to take a little get you, getting used to, and throughout the year, it'll make more and more sense. Now, you see here that I could have taken this implied subject and turned it into an explicit subject by rewriting the sentence like that, like that right i've gotten rid of the implied subject and i made it explicit i can also do that here we're going to talk about this another day but i'm going to introduce the topic today i can do that here by using the keyword this which we haven't learned yet but it's going to be coming up here soon this is not on your unit two exam by the way this keyword but this is basically saying me or i just as here I have turned an implicit subject into an explicit, I can do that here also. But we're not gonna do that in unit two. We'll do that in some other unit. Right now, we'll just continue to imply the subject is I or me.